Hey guys, I know I've been posting too much. So God, it's hard to talk, it's so fucking cold. Uh, I've been posting too much because it's uh, been a lot of work, I've been busy, and I usually, like I said in one of the other videos, I only have uh, an hour here, hour there to come out here and work. But I thought I'd update you on what's going on. Definitely lots of progress, but I can't make videos on each step like I've done before. Uh, some of you guys might want every little detail, others just want to know the gist. Both is fine, but lately I've just been able to post here and there when I have time. Uh, so, for example, like what I'm dealing with is, so right now, today's Monday, uh, my wife works, so I have to watch my little dude on Mondays, and he goes down for a nap around, around 9, 10, he goes down for 45 minutes to an hour, so I have that time to come out here and do some work. And then he goes down again uh, around 1.30, 2 o'clock for maybe an hour. So then I have that little time. And then uh, otherwise I'm, I'm here just doing work around the house, helping my wife, helping my kid, and uh, doing all the, all the awesome dad stuff. So I have little time. So when I do come out here, it's 45 minutes here, hour here, and that's why I haven't had a whole lot of uh, videos coming out lately. Plus add to that, it is damn cold. It's, so this past weekend we had a crazy snowstorm, which is awesome, I love snow, I hate the cold, but I, I really like the snow. And uh, so we went out and played a little bit, but it was just so cold. So this morning I woke up around 7.30 and it was, we have, we have a weather station here. It was negative six degrees Fahrenheit just without the wind. With the wind, it was uh, negative 21. So all day today, it's been hovering around like negative 0.5 and positive 0.5. So it's been really, really cold. And even as I film this, my hand is freezing because my hand is uncovered. Uh, so that's what I've been dealing with. So that's why I haven't had a lot of whole, a lot of detailed videos. Uh, hopefully you guys are okay listening to my boring personality and, and droning on about stuff that you might not give a shit about. But uh, eh, I guess if you liked it, you're gonna watch. If you don't, you're not, you're not watching this. So, uh, anyways, I'll take you on a quick tour of what I have going on right now, and. Uh, I've got the monitor over behind me on my table saw over there so I can listen to him for when he gets up and yeah, I'll just flip this around and show you some stuff that I'm working on right now while I have a few minutes. All right, I showed you guys most of the stuff already. There, I haven't made a whole lot of progress back here. Nothing really has been cleaned up. Uh, AC is still pretty much ready to go, or I'm sorry, the high voltage is pretty much ready to go. I just uh, haven't turned it on yet. Um, so Chatmo is here and connected and I, which a lot of people probably would frown on, but I added, they're, they're heavy duty, uh, butt connectors in here and I crimped them like three times on each side. Uh, so this is a really, really solid wire. This is a plug from a wrecked Nissan Leaf. Um, really solid wire. It's, I don't know exactly, but it's somewhere around one gauge. And, but it's just really stiff. And uh, the one out cable that I'm using everywhere else, uh, which is rated to, I believe, 255 amps, is really flexible. It's really fine-stranded. So in order to make this turn and go into the box, and I had just had to notch the box out, and uh, I, I just had to add butt connectors. So this is, like, solid. I'm moving the whole camper just by shaking these little wires here. Uh, this is going to be the AC input, and I'm going to run these over to a junction box. It's going to be somewhere around here. Uh, so when I'm connected to shore power, it's going to power all the outlets that I have. And then this is a 12 volt uh, SAE plug that I have wired right to my fuse box here. Um, that is going to be, I mean, I've had my trickle charger lately connected to it, but it's also just going to be a, a DC plug for DC in or out. And if I wanted to have something connected outside here, 
I can connect it right into there, 12 volt or AC. So there's the AC. And then here is the Chatmo plug. Uh, I had a lot of questions about Chatmo. I haven't got dove into the, the details uh, of actually making it work yet. It's, I'm sure, doable. And I have uh, an excellent guy help me out with a lot of the, uh, the CAN data and all that kind of stuff that I don't really do. And I'm sure we can figure it out together. But that's where I'm at here in the back. Uh, I've got my awesome switches all connected. The power is all working. Everything's good here. Uh, this is the cover that's, that is going to sit right here. However, uh, I'm going to be changing this and probably trimming it up. I bought a uh, Dometic fridge that I'm going to sit right here and I'm going to build like a, a little sliding tray so I can pull it in and out uh, and access the, the fridge. Really awesome fridge. Scored an awesome deal on eBay. I'm really happy about. All right, so there's that. And then up front here, I have this mounted. I have all my switches mounted. So this is going to be, these are indicator lights. So if I know that the uh, heater is working or the cooling is working so it's just going to depend on what the controller is calling for either heat or cooling uh, this is my switch to turn the whole system on i wanted to go something with it was a little different than the uh, push button that i did in the last one and so far it seems really nice and then these are all switches for different functions i'm not sure exactly what is going to be what quite yet but uh, just like in the previous t-rex uh, this is going to be the contactor kill, so the main contactor for the whole battery pack, it'll be normally pushed in, but if I ever need to uh, turn those off, I just push it and turn it off, so now it's flush. Uh, this one's green, this one's red, uh, I don't remember these colors, but uh, this one it looks like, it kind of can tell, it looks like it's orange. This is a uh, This is a momentary switch, so this is going to be for the... Uh, DC to AC adapter uh, back there, or converter. So that one just requires a momentary push, and it's not, it's not a latching switch. Then, actually, that looks like it's blue. This is a latching switch, and this is a latching switch. I think that one might be white. And those two are going to be for um, probably the, to turn the DC to DC converter off, and then... Yeah, I guess I can't really think what the last one would be for right now. And then I have the two openings here. This is going to be for a J1772 plug. This is for the Tesla plug, which are both sitting right there. And again, I haven't worked all that the details quite out yet, but that's where those are going to be connected. Um, I think if possible, I'll have the high voltage and the data all join each other. So then I could use either or at any given time, and they both would lead to the uh, Tesla charger, which you might have seen in the previous video, the Tesla charger's gonna be sitting right here. It's not screwed down yet, but that's where it's gonna sit. Uh, I got a lot of the plumbing, maybe, maybe half the plumbing done. Uh, I know I got a lot of wires here. <laughs> it's, uh, I know actually know what they all are, it's just, uh, it kind of looks like a mess right now. So with this system, I'm actually going to have two pumps. Talking about the heating and cooling system. Get that piece of foam out of here. So with this system, there's going to be a, a, a main or a, one of the pumps there. So it's going to go down in into the battery pack, through all the battery packs, all the modules and everything, up and out right here. And this was kind of a hard bend to make to go through here into the Tesla battery heater. And that's going to be, the Tesla battery heater is going to be in series with the whole system. So it's either going to be heated or cooled depending on what the batteries need. And it's not perfect, but otherwise I would, I would have needed a whole separate cooling system. And I don't think I really need it. I don't think it's going to be that much of an issue, but uh, time will tell, of course. Uh, but that's what I'm doing so far. And then I'll take you around to the other side. I have a radiator that... I've already mocked up and uh, mounted a couple times. So the radiator is going to sit right here. This radiator is from a uh, 95 Escort. Uh, it just happened to be a good size. It was brand new. Um, I found it on uh, the local uh, Facebook marketplace. So I picked that up. Uh, 
that's going to be the outlet right there and then the inlet is right over here so i'll spin around i'm starting to mock up some pipes here but it's it's so damn cold i could only get this on halfway so i have to bring this inside by the fireplace and warm this whole piece up so i can actually get those pieces together and then over here so I've got uh, this coming out of the Tesla charger, which is right here. I've got another drain line. Oh, I forgot to point that out. I have one drain line over there. I wanted definitely plenty of drain lines in case I have to, ever have to work on the system or do anything. So there's one drain line that's going to go to that hose right there. So this loops around the charger, goes down here, uh, which is going to be right over there. Then. It has a, a T, so it's going to go straight up, and it's going to be the uh, inlet to the radiator, and then it's going to continue, or it's going to continue on and go to the heater, which is going to sit right over here. So then I'll have the heater out, which is that side right there, and then I'll have this right here for cooling. So both of those two are going to come together with. Oh, hold on one second to a Tesla three-way switch, which I'm gonna mount somewhere right around here. So I marked C, if you see the top left port is C, that's the common port. So the common port's gonna go up to the return line on the uh, tank right there. And these other two ports, one's gonna go to the Tesla charger that I pointed at, it's gonna be right over there. And the other one is gonna go right over here to the, uh, the coolant. Uh, the cool side of the radiator. And then, so that's the back side of all the switches, all the electronics over there, still have a little bit of work to do over there. And that's my other pump right there. I'm gonna have great flow with these two pumps. It's, I think, gonna work really, really well. Uh, that's one downside that I noticed with the T-Rex over there, the, the V1, that um, the first module or two was getting all of the, the heat, so they were warming up first. Uh, which means that you need to have the fluid move faster in order for uh, it to transfer the heat through more of the modules and not just the first ones. So with this one, there's more modules, so it's going to be more of an issue, and that's why I wanted to have two pumps and have it move a little faster. Wow, it is so cold, it's hard to freaking talk. It's crazy. Uh, and then over here, this is going to be the what I call the Caleb shelf. So this is the bottom side of the lid that's going right there and it fits in there nicely. It actually, this is, yeah, so the bottom side is gonna flip it over like that. Uh, I have this notched out for, uh, right there, <laughs> there we go. We have this notched out for the coolant stuff over there. And then I have this notched out to make a little room for the uh, switch box, which sticks out just a little bit and so I've got this done I just need to uh, wrap it with fiberglass and it's going to be nice and strong it's a little narrow I, I actually brought Caleb in here when it wasn't zero degrees and just sat him on the shelf <laughs> inside here to see how it was going to be and it is a little narrow uh, well, so we'll see I, I could always uh, get a, another piece of foam or a decorative piece of wood on here and make it a little bit wider and then maybe even put like a little lip here or something so it doesn't roll off but uh, that's still work in progress and what else all right so and I guess with the oh, where'd they go over here I've been thinking about these a lot if you watched one of my pre previous videos actually I'm not sure if I posted it yet I'll have to look um, I did some testing with uh, mapping and fiberglass and stuff like that. And my whole plan, because I thought it would be kind of cool, is to wrap the, the uh, camper in maps and then do like graphics over top of it or something. But I'm really on the fence. Like, so depending on how the finish for the fiberglass is, I, if I have to do too much sanding, I hate sanding, I, I might not do it, but... I'm thinking about sanding it down and then just having it uh, sprayed white and then I can put whatever graphics on it. But um, 
so this right here was white, but there's a lot of bleed through that I'm getting because the maps are all dub double sided and on the back side of this map was red. So still got to work on that. I mean, luckily I'm still a ways away from actually wrapping. That's going to be like the, the last thing I do. I'm thinking probably April or something when the, when the weather starts getting warmer and I'm positive that I got all the wiring done that I need to get done. But the last thing I want to do is get it all wrapped in fiberglass encasing all of these all of these wires and then realize oh shit i wanted an outlet here or that would have been nice i mean as it is i'm already uh tweaking this a little bit so i, I took off the tape and uh i'm gonna be changing that a little bit but all right yeah i guess that's about it my fingers are ready to fall off so i'm gonna leave it at that uh any questions or anything of course definitely let me know um if you feel like sharing go ahead I've never made it a point to ask people to share. If you think it's cool, go ahead or uh, subscribe if you want. And uh, that's about it. <laughs> uh, see you guys. Thanks for watching.